All right. I have here a private message that was sent to me from a dear sister in the Lord, friend of the ministry, and a very good point. I'm not going to read her name. Um, don't know if you want to be named or not, sister, so I'll just leave that out. Uh, but I'm going to read the private message here. Uh, another great proof text proving that the body of Christ uh, not only is not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, but we have actually already been delivered from it. So what do you... Huh? First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Get a hold of that one. Okay? I'm going to get to her message here in just a minute, but look at that. To wait for his Son from heaven. Nobody else but saved people are waiting for Jesus Christ. Whom he raised from the dead. It's talking about Jesus. How do you know? Because it says, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. It does not say, will deliver, or possibly may deliver, or it's delivered, past tense. You see, the whole complete package of salvation was completed at Calvary. That's why Jesus said it is finished. And when you get saved, when God saves you, and it's God that saves you, by the way, it's not by your own actions and things like this, as far as, you know, contemplative, and I imagine that I'm saved. No, you call out to the Lord and you ask Him to save you because you have faith in what He did. You believe that He died on the cross, and He'll save you, all right? And I've talked about that in other studies, so I'm not going to go off on that. But the whole point is, when God saves you, you get the whole thing. He purchases you with His blood. Acts chapter 20 talks about that. He'll purchase you. And now, He puts a seal upon you, and He says, that one's mine. And you say, well, you know, what if, uh, what if He changes His mind, and maybe He'll... He's not going to change His mind. And He actually gets you predestinated at that point in time. Predestination is not before salvation. Predestination is after you get saved. You are predestinated to go and be with the Lord. Again, other studies. But let me let me read her message here. It's pretty good. <clears throat> and we're not going to look up all, a lot of these scriptures. You can look them up on your own time. Um, she provides a lot of scriptures here. But uh, it says, Hi, Brian. We pray you and your family are well and having a nice day. Uh, it's a nice day, but it's a little bit hot. I don't know if you probably hear the air conditioner on over here. I had to install it. Usually it doesn't get very hot in the month of June, this early on anyhow, but... It's very hot right now. Um, so yes, we are kind of having a nice day. So. Um, a few days ago, I watched your video, Flee from the Wrath to Come. As I was reading Thessalonians last night, I saw something new that I think is another proof of the catching away of the church. If you have a minute, please read. Thank you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Number one, point number one. God didn't say, will deliver us, but that he has already delivered us from something that has not happened yet. Who can be delivered from something that hasn't happened yet, and how? Point number two, wait for his son, who is waiting for Jesus, not the lost world who will receive his judgment in the time of Jacob's trouble. We, the church, are waiting for Jesus to catch us away. Amen. We are waiting for God's promises, us equals the church. Those who are saved only receive this promise from God. John chapter 14, verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, Jesus in heaven, in other words, after the resurrection, which is stated in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. I said in other words, there. that's not part of the thing. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Also, Ephesians 2, 6, we are sealed, we are already sealed in Christ, salvation, and seated in heavenly places in Christ, just waiting for the manifestation of our bodies to be resurrected, delivered. In spirit, we are delivered at salvation and are waiting to be resurrected, called up, and have Jesus's, or Jesus promised to come again and receive us. Another reference, Deuteronomy 31, verse 8, just for instruction purposes. God goes before us and then will be with us. Instruction and in righteousness, in other words. I'm not trying to say doctrine there, but instruction and in righteousness, there are things that will line up, uh, which is certainly true. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, Jesus is resurrected first, then he comes to receive us who are waiting for him, and our bodies are raised incorruptible with him, equals the catching away. And John chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. Number three, point number three. Sum up, sum up what I am trying to say, she says here. Delivered equals, even though our physical body has not been resurrected yet, Jesus promised us the saved only and delivered us at our salvation. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 6 through 22. You can read that on your own time. Uh, Jesus promised us that we are saved, sealed, and seated in heavenly places with him in spirit right now, waiting for the manifestation of our resurrected bodies. Our catching away will be the manifestation of what, what Christ already did for us on the cross at each of our own salvation, so those delivered from the wrath to come can only be the saved because the wrath hasn't happened yet. Yep. Jesus only promised the church, us, that we are delivered. How can this be a promise to anyone else? 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10 is speaking of those who are alive after Jesus has come in the flesh and been resurrected. Those who come through or out of the time of Jacob's trouble cannot be given this promise. They have a different gospel for salvation. Their gospel requires in part for them to obey God's commandments and endure to the end. How can God promise that group of people they can be delivered before they go through it? Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here they, they keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. They will not know they are delivered until the end of their days in the time of Jacob's trouble. How can God promise anyone, any other who is not sealed in Christ, that they will be delivered from a future event, especially an event that requires works as part of salvation? Absolutely a great point, you know, totally. Um, you cannot be promised something, a future thing, delivered from the wrath to come if you have to endure to the end to be saved. You know, the promises for Bible-believing Christians today. Blood-bought Christians. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust. She has in quotations here, the church is the only justified group justified in Christ under the day of judgment to be punished. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, Revelation 3, verses 10 through 11, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day. Um, and she has here, what crown would Paul be given at that day and not be given at his death when he goes home to be with the Lord? And then she it goes back into the verse here. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love um, his appearing. And she has written, who loves his appearing? Only the church. All others will face Jesus' judgment before his second coming. Yep. Uh, concluding here. Thanks, Brian, for taking the time to read this. Sorry it took takes me too long to explain. God bless you and your family. Uh, no, it's not too long to explain. There's very, very, very good, uh, very profound points there. Um, I mean, it's really just like you think about that. Uh, it isn't, well, you know, I'm hoping that we can, you know, the, uh, what's the, so I've heard people say, they say, I'm pan-tribulation. It'll all pan out in the end. Or I'm, I'm hoping for the pre-trib rapture, but preparing for the post-trib, you know. I did a video kind of mocking that whole thing. No, we are delivered from the wrath to come. We're looking for Jesus Christ, all right? We're, we're, we're anxiously awaiting him to come and take us out of here. I mean, you can see this wicked world, and it's just like we're trying to fight things as much as we can as Bible-believing Christians, but it's just hopeless. I mean, you know, to turn this world back to a moral condition or whatever else. I mean, this world's so far gone. I mean, even if, even if we could somehow turn all people to fearing God and, you know, whatever, the planet's still messed up through all the toxicity, all the pollution, all the other things. Um, this this world is gone. Okay? Uh, there's really not a whole lot we can do right now other than just pray for the lost to be saved and try to get people saved. And, um, you know, so when the body of Christ leaves, there will be more people leaving with us. That's really our only real responsibility as far as... Uh, trying to fix things up in the world. You know, I mean, speak out about evil things. Sure, I do that. A lot of you do that. Uh, praise the Lord. But uh, it's about salvation. It's about getting those people saved. Uh, truly saved, not false con you know, conversion through all these false little means and whatever else. But it's just neat to know that our 
the time of the rapture is already, the Lord knows when it's going to happen. And we're already seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're part of His body. So, you know, as I've said before, uh, they say, well, you know, Jesus isn't a wife beater. He's not going to be, you know, beating his bride during the time of Jacob's trouble. Good point. But it goes even further than that. You say, you see in a biblical marriage, two become one flesh. So I'm part of Christ's body. If you're saved, you're part of Christ's body. So he's not going to be, not only is he not going to beat his wife, he's not going to beat himself. All right. We're delivered from the wrath to come. The wrath is about to fall in this world. And we can look at it and say, getting close you know <laughs> oh boy yeah this is pretty good hey look there's there's a possibility of nuclear war really you know oh look the the, the vatican's you know taking over jerusalem and they're they're going to be putting the throne of the pope there and stuff like this and the, really you know i wonder if they're going to blow up the dome of the rock yet you know <laughs> the the, Mo the mosque of omar thing over there stupid muslim uh, pagan temple that it is you know I mean, there's theories, you know, well, they could build a temple elsewhere and stuff like this. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think they're going to get rid of that mosque probably before real long. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be here to see it. I don't know. But uh, certainly if we are and that mosque goes bye-bye and the Muslims go crazy, um, it's going to be interesting. But uh, if that happens, if that mosque of Omar, sometime you wake up and there's that's in the news, that thing got wiped out get ready to leave because it's going to be coming quick after that I believe because of Antichrist coming in with a peace treaty and all the other stuff but uh, very good point sister I really appreciate that um, definitely an encouragement that we are delivered from the wrath to come don't worry about it you're not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble if you're genuinely saved so that's going to be it thank you for watching